Hey, did you know that Jesus actually taught about the principles of renewing your mind in the New Testament? I'm going to share with you three things today that Jesus taught and how they can encourage you to start shifting your mindset into one that aligns with his kingdom. Here today on God's Plan for Living. Well, hey, my friend, welcome back to the channel. So glad that you're here as we get rolling today. Make sure that you've hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like this video, and please leave me a comment at the end or either while I'm teaching to let me know that what I'm teaching today on Renewing Your Mind is uh, influencing you and encouraging you in everything that God has for you in His kingdom. So for a lot of believers, they think the first time that we hear anything about renewing our minds is actually in that classic verse in Romans 12 too, where Paul says, hey, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But I want to suggest that Jesus was uh, seeding that idea and teaching the principles of renewing your mind all throughout the Gospels and nowhere better than in John 14. I want to walk you through a few things today that are really three key principles that Jesus taught about renewing your mind. Because when you can begin to put these principles into play in your life, you can start getting the results that Jesus promised, which is greater works, right? Experiencing the abundant life. We can start to get those things in our life, not just because we're going after results, but because we're learning how to align with his, with his truth and his kingdom in our life. So I want to pull up, uh, you know, John 14 here, and I love this verse. Uh, it starts out, let not your heart be troubled. This is Jesus talking. You know, um, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place. So he's telling the disciples, you know, the whole time he's saying, listen, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Believe in me. All right. You believed in my father. Believe also in me. And so I would say the first principle that Jesus is teaching us here is like, hey, if you want to walk in the fullness of my kingdom, you've got to believe in me. In fact, Jesus goes on. I'm just looking down here in, in uh, verse 6 and in, in 14. It says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying if you want to walk in the fullness, if you want to experience life abundant, if you want to do the, the greater works that, that I've told you, told you about, that I've demonstrated to you, that I've promised you, that I've equipped you for, it all starts with belief in me. Now listen, this is really important because I think up until now for, for us as believers, but also maybe as the disciples, there was not this like walking by faith thing and woo, we can do it and, and all this kind of thing. How were they living? They were living under the law. They were living under fear. They were living under not enough. They were living up under, I hope I can make it. I hope God loves me. I hope I can, I can measure up. It's like the man in the story of, of Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, the, the guy that only had one talent. He said, I knew you to be a hard man, right? He just went and hid his talent in the ground thinking that what? He couldn't measure up. This is the context in which the disciples are living. And, and yet they have been walking with Jesus this whole time. And what is Jesus saying? Hey, believe in me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And so you have to realize no matter what, uh, you know, history you have in your life, whether it be spiritual or not spiritual, religious or not spiritual, not religious, church going or not church going, everything in the kingdom of God starts with singular belief in Jesus. There's no other way to God except through Jesus. That's not my words. That's his words. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And so that's a mindset shift. That's a part of renewing your mind to, to say, hey, I'm not just trying to make it on my own. I don't have to be fearful of God. I can believe in his son and on the finished work of the cross. And as I do, it opens a door to new possibilities in my life. Listen, one of the worst things you can do as a Christian is to get saved because of simply a fear of, of not going to hell and live in that continued fear of, well, I hope I'm saved enough. I hope God loves me enough. I hope I make it. I hope I don't sin too much while I'm here on this earth. I hope it, I hope I did enough. No, you didn't, you couldn't have done enough. In fact, that was the whole point why Jesus came. We couldn't do enough, but Jesus did everything. He did for us what we could not do in order to give to us what we could never earn 
or create on our own. Restoration and redemption and reconciliation with the Father. So belief, belief, believe in me. That is a big, big mindset shift. And to be seated, rooted and grounded in that knowledge, that love of God in the finished work of Christ, that is a key to successful kingdom living and to walking in all that God's got for you. Now, number two, Jesus goes on and he, he continues. I'm not going to read all of it, but he, he says here, uh, you know, uh, in verse uh, number 11, believe, again, believe, believe in me that I'm, uh, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of, of the works themselves. In other words, he's like, take my word for it. I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. But if you don't even believe that, just look at what I've done, right? Let my works, let the miracles, let the way I've lived, let the words that I've said, let that prove to you that I'm worth believing in. But then he says this in verse 12, he said, most assuredly, I'll say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Now think of this right here, because I, as I'm reading this, I'm just looking. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful passage of Scripture. The works I do, he will do also, and greater works, <laughs> greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father. So again, it's this beautiful idea that as you believe, you're going to do greater works. That's just a part of the package. Now you may be saying, well, gosh, that sounds kind of sounds kind of presumptuous. Like I'm just trying to measure up to Jesus, not, not be, you know, not do greater works. Listen, that's Jesus's words. So there's something about this idea that as you shift your mindset, as you come into alignment with the truth of God's word through the salvation experience, you have imp implanted in you the ability to do greater works than Jesus did. That's a mindset shift. That's something you need to renew your mind to. Why? So that you believe that that is even possible. Remember, the thoughts that you dwell on create the world that you dwell in. And if you're always looking at life through unbelief and through fear, guess what? You will never, ever be able to step into the fullness that God has for you. No matter how much you love you, no matter how much you're saved and going to heaven and all that, if you don't renew your mind, you don't get to step into the transformation that is available to every believer. All right. Now, so number two, you know, we're talking about, first of all, believe. Second of all, I want to, I want to bring this out in verse 13. This is, is John chapter 14, verse 13. And it, it says this, um, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do and that my father might be glorified in the son. And then listen to this crazy. This is a crazy scripture right here. He says, if you ask anything, anything, anything. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Wow. This is completely transformational. Again, when we think about the mindset that the disciples were probably living in this, in this, you know, in, in this time, even having walked with Jesus, still fearful, still a little nervous. I don't know if I'm measuring up. Is this even possible for me? And think about how they were probably used to approaching God. Sacrificial system, only on certain days, begging God for forgiveness, for his mercy, not quite sure on the inside if they, if they were going to make it. And what is Jesus saying? He said, when you believe in me, <laughs> you can ask anything. You, in fact, you can come with boldness. You can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Whoa, mindset shift. Again, Jesus is trying to get the disciples to renew their mind to a new reality. What's that new reality? The reality of the kingdom that Jesus is coming to usher in. He's inviting them into. And so this is, this is absolutely huge for them. Believe and then ask boldly as a son, as a daughter, not as a slave, not as somebody that's no longer worthy. One that has been redeemed and restored and reconciled. Wow. And then number three, you know, principles So we're talking about believe and ask. Then the third one here I would say is, is do. Believe and ask and do. In, in verse number 15, Jesus says this, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father uh, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you 
and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So again, what is Jesus saying in this moment? Hey, if you believe in me, I'm going to empower you with the ability to do greater works and anything that you need to do, anything that you need, ask for it. Anything that's required in this assignment, in this life, ask for it. We already know, you know, roll the tape back a little bit. Matthew 6, 33, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and what all these things will be added unto you. So we know that provision comes not as through our performance or measuring up, but it comes because of our position as sons. And so Jesus is saying here, believe on me, ask anything in my name. Uh, I'll do it for you. All right. You're going to do greater works than these. And then number three, what do in other words, obey my commands. You're going to do greater works than these. That is, there's going to be an active intentionality in your life that you're moving to the things that I'm showing you. You're moving with the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But what? Obey. Obey. In your doing, don't just get off by yourself. Don't just try to figure it out by yourself. Don't try to get out there and strive and all that sort of thing. You want to make sure that you're obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit the whole time. Why? Because that's where, that's where leadership comes. That's where confidence comes. That's where the grace is released. And so my friend, if you have been wondering, well, did Jesus teach on renewing your mind? Absolutely. He taught about renewing your mind. Because even in this, in this scripture in John 14, we're learning that Jesus is teaching the disciples and then through the disciples, he's teaching the church and even us now today that as we shift our mindset and we shift our heart into agreement with the truth of his word and the reality of the kingdom, we can experience different results. Not only God moving in us, but through us, not only the abundant life for us, but also becoming a conduit of blessing for others in every area of life. That's how the kingdom of God works. That's God's plan for living for every believer. Listen, my friend, I hope that encourages you today. Be sure to leave me a comment below. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss uh, any of these incredible teachings that are coming out every week. Um, and until next time, I love you. Thanks so much for joining me here on God's Plan for Living.